Hello everyone, John with Mojave Trails. And in this video, I'd like to cover, should you even buy a Jeep in 2024? I'll go over what issues I've had, what issues are being reported, and the things that you need to do to remedy it so that you can feel safe when you take your Jeep out on the trail. All right, so I've recently just turned 70,000 miles on my Jeep. And throughout the years that I've been doing this, I've been getting a lot of questions about the reliability of the Jeep. Um, highlighted by this question right here, one of the viewers had posted and it prompted me to say, well, it's a, be a good time to do a detailed walk around of it, issues I've had, and then also the things that I've seen and reported. Okay, so let's start by talking about the issues that I've had, all the mechanical problems I've had with my Jeep Gladiator. Um, that would be one issue that I've had, and that was two weeks after I bought it, brand new. It had shipped from the factory with a cracked box um, that had to do with where the electronics come into under the hood. And basically I wasn't able to start the vehicle. And after that was fixed, I've had no other issues in 70,000 miles. And I have taken this vehicle all over the country, off-road off a lot in a lot of remote areas. And it has been 100% reliable. Um, all right, even though I've only had one issue with this, um, I am well aware of other reported issues. I keep my, you know, I watch a lot of videos on things. I keep my eyes on other forums and I'm aware of some of the things. So let's address them. Number one thing that people complain about or issue that they mentioned with the, with this, this engine, this 3.6 Pentastar engine, is that the oil can drain out of it, uh, what they call a dry start. And there's some remedies for that. Um, there's a number of aftermarket products you can buy that hold oil in the top of the reservoir. I, and I, I don't have that. I haven't installed it yet. I haven't had any issues with my engine yet. Um, I'm at 70,000 miles. Will I have it 100, 125,000? I'm not, I'm not sure, possibly. I'm not saying that it's a bad idea. I'm just saying I haven't had, found a need to do it yet. I like to keep things simple as much as possible. The more things you add to your vehicle, um, you know, the more issues you're going to have down the road, more things you got to try to maintain. But that's one that does kind of make sense to me. Another issue that people um, often talk about is that they experience the oil cooler cracking with a lot of heat. And again, that's not something that I've experienced and I don't have. I haven't done anything to remedy that at this point. I figure I keep an eye on it. I walk, look at I always do a walk around of my vehicle underneath on top in the engine bay before I'm going to go out on a long trip. And I look for signs and I also take it in for regular maintenance. We'll talk about maintenance that I think you have to do shortly. Um, and I have another guy, an off-road guy that I use uh, that looks at it. So at this point, we haven't felt the need to, re to replace it, but it's on the list of something that I'm going to keep an eye on in case. Now, some of that cracking, the extra heat, also has to do with the model that you have and how you use it. Nice thing about the Mojave, since it was built as a desert runner, it has the largest fan. It's it got a lot more cooling than, say, the Rubicon or other models do. Uh, I know on JKs and stuff, this has been reported more as well. So again, that's also why I haven't done anything yet. I think Jeep took a lot of that into consideration when they made the Mojave. It's another reason why I think the Mojave is the best platform to, to buy for a Gladiator. Another um, comment that people often make is about the electrical issues that they might have. Again, I haven't experienced any electrical issues other than when it shipped, that electrical box where all your fuses and everything come into was cracked and that was causing an issue. Uh, once that was replaced, at no charge to me, obviously, since it came from the factory that way, I've had zero electrical issues. Now, as far as the alternator goes on this, uh, first of all, Jeep does a really good job. They locate the alternator on the top of the engine where a Toyota puts it at the bottom. If you have a Toyota and you're doing any kind of water crossings, uh, mud driving, anything, you're going to burn through some alternators in the life of that vehicle. It's uh, one of the reasons why, again, I purchased a, a Jeep over a Toyota. And, and this vehicle, the Mojave, and this has the tow package on it, has the largest alternator that you can get. And so I have no issues with keeping up with the amount of things that I have plugged into it, um, chargers and everything else, and, and charging my power units when I'm out driving. Everything charges up very fast with this setup. Another thing that's often reported in forums um, is cracked windshields on a Jeep. And that is a thing, as you notice behind me, I've got a big crack. This is the first one I've had in the four years that I've had this vehicle. Happened on the freeway, somebody threw up a stone. That's not exclusive to Jeep alone. You're going to get that at any oh, vehicle. My son had it on his Bronco, you know, a month after he purchased it. 
since these windshields are and on the Jeep it's so vertical, uh, they're going to collect a lot more stones than than other you know vehicles do. Plus, we do take ours off road a lot. We take ours on on forest service roads and gravel roads a lot. So you're kicking up more stones. Uh, you're trailing behind other people on the trail. Most people don't run mud flaps. So you're you are kind of setting yourself up for that. I know they have products out there. Uh, I wouldn't pay for the money for a Gorilla Glass because I think they can still crack, but they do have stuff that you put on similar like your uh, on your cell phone to protect the glass. And then if it does crack, you can take that off and put a, a new one on. And so when I replace this windshield, I'm definitely going to put some of that on and, and see how it does. Because cracked windshields are, are a real thing on any off-road vehicle. So let's get into how you keep your Jeep running uh, well for a long time. Because this is the 13th Jeep that I've owned. All of my Jeeps had well over 100,000 miles on them before I got rid of them. Uh, and it was the same thing. The normal things that are going to wear out, you're going to wear out brakes on a vehicle. Although on this one, I'm still good. I've still got 10 millimeters of uh, brake pad before I got to replace it. I could probably get it to 80,000, 82,000 miles before I have to replace the brakes on this. And that's even with doing a lot of towing. So the brake pads that Jeep use on these are actually really, really good. The maintenance components that you need to do regularly and you can't skip. Number one is oil change. That's that's obvious. Every 7,000 miles or even a little under that, if I'm going to turn 7,000 on a trip, I'll always do it before I before I go on the trip. At that time, I'm having the, the dealership or myself, whoever's doing the oil change, do a complete walk around, look at it, notice anything uh, that might be, you know, look like it's going to wear out and address it ahead of time. I also always rotate the tires at 7,000 miles. So whenever I have an oil change, I have them rotate the tires at the same time, or I do it myself. Um, the next thing that I do is I change the differential fluids at 40,000 miles, um, front and back. And then I change the air filters at around 15,000 cabin, and I just do both at the same time. That's something pretty easy you can do yourself. If I've got it at the dealership, I might have them throw it on at that time. Um, but I always carry a spare air filter along too. If I'm out west or areas where it's really dry or dusty, then I'll change it before the trip, and then again, after the trip, when I'm about to come home, I'll change it. Now, yeah. underneath the vehicle, I keep it washed. Try to keep it as clean as I can. Get the mud and dirt and stuff off of it. Um, if there's any grease fittings, I, I do grease fittings regularly. At the same time, I'm going to do oil change. I'll, I'll do the grease fittings. Okay, so as far as the shocks go, at 70,000 miles, these things are still working as good as they were day one. I haven't had to do anything with them, haven't rebuilt them yet. Um, I'll probably check again at around 80, 85,000 miles and decide then if I'm going to rebuild them or replace them. Okay, so let's talk about your Jeep itself. How you're going to set it up, what you're going to do with it. Should you put a lift on it? Should you not put a lift on it? What size tires should you run? My, my biggest issue that I see with people um, that buy a Jeep, especially first timers, they've watched a ton of videos. They have no idea what they're going to do with their Jeep, what to do. So, But they're more worried about what lift they're going to put on there and what size tires they're going to run before they've ever taken it off-road once, before they've ever decided how they want to use it, the kind of trips they're going to do with it. Um, and I think that's a huge mistake. When you start after, adding aftermarket parts, you're setting yourself up for those parts are usually the first ones that are going to fail if you're off-road in the trail. So, so going with cheap aftermarket parts is definitely a mistake. Um, Knowing which ones you should install, which ones are recommended and the best that have the best reputation. If you are going to put them on there, that's really important. There's a number of companies that I would recommend. I'm not going to get into those at this company in this video, but don't just go cheap just to put a lift on, to make your truck look cool because you will have problems. All right, so let's get into how my vehicle is set up and what's on it and why I put it on there. So when I bought the Mojave, I specifically bought it for the suspension because I didn't want to have to add a whole bunch of aftermarket things. And the suspension and tuning on the Mojave stock is phenomenal. It's as good as anything you're going to find out there. And you'll be amazed at how much you can do with this vehicle stock. Now, when we took it out west after we bought it, and we did a number of trails out there, I noticed I was rubbing in a few areas on some of the trails over waterfalls and, and things that I decided, you know, I do want a little bit more lift. I didn't think I needed three inches more clearance for the stuff I was going to do, but I knew I wanted to put on 35-inch tires. I also waited till my other ones were, were done. I wasn't going to just throw that on there and waste a bunch of money that I didn't need to. So another point yeah. about the tires, as I said, I wanted more clearance. I put on the 35s, and these are a true 35. They're not a metric. So they're true 35. They're open country AT3s from Toyo. 
uh, but they're 11 and a half. So I could, that means I could keep them on the stock suspension. They weigh within a pound the same amount as the Falcon 33s that were on here, which are actually only a 32 inch tire. So I picked up an inch and a half of ground clearance by opening to, to go on these, but I didn't add any more um, weight to the vehicle and no unsprung weight, which means that the performance of the engine was unaffected by the addition of these tires. I did have to adjust the, get a tuner to adjust the size of the tires, which incidentally, from the factory, they were still set at 28, which I thought was kind of interesting, even though they were, the Falcons were 33. So I actually improved a little bit in my shifting when I installed these because I reset it to the proper uh, gear size or the proper tire size for the gearing of the vehicle. When we did Schnebly Hill Road, while there was no trouble doing it, the Jeep handled really, really well. Uh, the fact that we didn't have a front sway bar disconnect made it really uncomfortable. And by the end of the trail, my kids were ready to toss me off the mountain. So I did put the Apex quick sway bar disconnects on here. I've loved them, used them out, out west. Uh, anytime I'm on a forest road that's even a little bit bumpy, I'll just disconnect them. It just makes it so much more comfortable of a ride. And you do end up with better articulation, but it just adds the com comfort factor on it. So because I knew I was going to take this to trails that were probably a five, about as, as difficult as I was going to do in this setup would be a five or six. I've had built out TJs in the past. I've done the Rubicon Trail in the past. Too old for that stuff. I don't get into breaking shit on the trail anymore. Uh, I don't enjoy that, that aspect as much. But I also knew the places we were going to go, a lot of times I'd be alone or with one other person, no other vehicle. And so I did install a winch and I installed the front bumper with a bull bar because where we go, it's not uncommon to hit deer in the backfield northern Wisconsin. So I wanted some protection for the grill when I was out there. Okay, the other thing, since I have a trailer hitch on, on this one, I have a trailer package and I do tow often with this vehicle. The number one thing I would do is get hit or get caught up on the trailer hitch itself. So I just have this rock slider that slips into the trailer hitch and the way it's designed is super thick steel and it's angled and yeah if you look at the bottom it's scuffed up but that has protected the underneath side of this and, and the trailer hitch you know eyes where you hook your change in is are still intact so that's this has been an invaluable piece okay so in conclusion should you buy a jeep in 2024 um absolutely you know a lot of how whether your vehicle is gonna going to last or leave you stranded is going to be on you. How much are you going to take care of it and how well are you at the maintenance factors or at least just keeping an eye on it. Maybe you're not a mechanic. I'm not a mechanic. Uh, there's some things I can do, some things I can't, but I know who to go to if I can. And that's not always the dealership. I do have a relationship with a person in town who does works on four by four Jeep vehicles, builds out all kind of crazy customs. Um, and that's who I took, take it to if I have questions. And if there's concerns and, and they've got the experience to, to tell you and give you honest advice, yeah, you should do this or you shouldn't. As you notice, I don't have a big lift or anything yet. As his advice was the same as, yeah, don't spend the money unless you really need it. And for what I want to do, I haven't needed it. When I time comes to get rid of this and this isn't and that won't be for many years, um, we'll see what the market is at that time. But I probably would be purchasing another Jeep because I've this is my 13th and I've had nothing but, uh, you know, good experience with all of them. Thanks for watching. Any questions, please comment below. I always answer all my questions. So if you got something I didn't cover in this vi video, I'm more than happy to answer it in the, in the question comments. See you on the trail.